Okay, John, this is just a quick uh, demonstration of the simulation. I've simplified it a little bit. I only got three figures. So the inputs are the green. So you can change any of these greens, any of these. You can change the number of customers. I've got it kind of on the maximum right now. So from a the benefit of risk pooling, uh, this is the best it could be. The smaller you make that, the less the benefit of risk pooling. You set the service level higher. The higher that is, the more benefit of risk pooling. If I set this at 99%, you'll see the bigger benefit versus something like 90%. You can set the amount of variability. You can't set the, the uh, weekly demand, average demand, but you can change the standard deviation demand. The more variable the data, the more benefit of risk pooling. If there's no variability, if this is really small, there's almost no benefit of all because there's no variability. Probably the most important thing that, I'll, that I would emphasize, at least in the paper I'm writing, is the location of the distribution center. So the total lead time from the plant to the customer, you can change this. I've got it set at five weeks. I would probably leave that as is. But where the location is, the DC location relative to the plant on the customer is something you can control. So if you want the DC really close to the customer, that's the biggest benefit. The, these numbers come between one and four. So when you have it close to one, it's really close to the customer and that's the biggest benefit. If you would make this four, and that means it's really close to the plant, if you would do that, there's actually a, the, the amount of inventory that risk pooling has is actually a lot more than decentralized. And, and so the risk pooling is actually worse when you have the plant, excuse me, the distribution center really close to the plant or very far away from the customers. It's only worth doing when you have it really close. And you've got those equations for break-even analysis. Down here at the bottom, these pictures, this shows you the total on-hand inventory. The orange is the risk pooling. The blue is the decentralized. So when the orange is below the blue, that means it has less inventory in the system. If you look at the average of this, that's what these show. This is average of decentralized. This is the average of risk pooling. The risk pooling actually shows up at two locations. There's some at the customer and there's some at the DC. And then these show service levels. There's really two ways to measure, there's probably more than two ways, but there's two ways to measure service level. One way to do it is to look at just individual items and look at the count, the number of stockouts. Uh, and divided by the total demand. That's what this is. But actually the safety stock equation is based on the number of times that you dip into safety stock or that you exceed the safety stock. And so this only occurs when the opportunity after, after a reorder. So when you're looking at this over time, if you're looking at inventory over time, this is looking at the number of the weeks that you went out of stock as opposed to the number of items. This is probably more representative. Uh, regardless, these show you that you can see that the risk pooling and the decentralized, they're almost the same, almost the same. When you hit the function key 9, so the F9 a key on your keyboard that recalculates everything in Excel so I'm going to hit it right now and you can just kind of watch these numbers when this changes and it seems you know that time this, this, both of them are above 95 percent but actually decentralized has a better service level now you're always comparing this at the same time you're looking at this so really what you're saying is to maintain the same service it looks like risk pooling is always less by about 20 uh, percent you need less inventory and risk pooling provided the location is in the right spot. Now these graphs are based on this output. So this output is in another worksheet. You can These are just tables of numbers, probably not as important, but the, these numbers is where these graphs come from. 
And then the nuts and bolts of the model is there's a DC worksheet that just shows the simulation. This is the keeping up all the numbers. And then this is for customer one. I've got some worksheets hidden. I right clicked and I could unhide and you can see I've got all the other customers, customers two through 10 hidden. You could show those, but they're the same. They look like this. They're just slightly different numbers. So this is where I would focus if I was on the presentation on, on what these numbers and what these mean and how you change these values, the impact that they have. And definitely as you move the DC further away from the customer, you can see that the benefit of risk pooling drops. And it looks like once you get over two, um, or you're, you're now in this place, we're closer to the, the plant and further away from the customer, the benefit drops to where it's almost not worth it. Okay, that's, uh, um, that's a brief uh, overview of the, uh, of the simulation. Thanks.